So Kepler had his two laws. And you know, you would think that'd be enough. I mean, I would have stopped at two, but somehow he knew to make it, you gotta have three, right? Newton would end up with three, thermodynamics, three. So you never hear somebody, oh, that guy and his two laws. No, you gotta go to three. So he just sat there and looked at the data, and I think he was kind of reaching until he came up with number three. It doesn't sound, it sounds a little odd. So the square of the orbital period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. Wow. If you stare at it long enough, you'll see it. Let's see. So let's do it for a circular orbit since we're good at those and see if we find that this is true. All right, so here we go. We got the sun here and something going in an orbit like that. We've done this a few times now. It's got some speed. It feels uh, the gravitational force is its centripetal uh, force. So we say centripetal force G, the mass of the sun, the mass of the planet over their separation squared. There's the force, the magnitude of the force equals now we've got to think it's the planet that's going around, m planet, its speed over that same r, if we think from the center of the sun to the center of the planet. All right, so we can, if we want to talk about orbital period, we have to do what we did with our moon calculation. We have to say, oh, hold on, let's let v equals 2 pi, the radius of the circle, that radius over the period. So we'll substitute that in, we'll go ahead and cancel that, we'll cancel one of those, and we'll be left with g, mass of the sun over r, equals what, four pi squared, two more r squareds over t, like that. Squared, I was about to say, uh, missing something here. Right, and then we're just gonna pull the t over here and say t squared, the square of the orbital period. Um, and then what do we have left? We have uh, four pi squared over g m s, four pi squared over g, big G, mass of the sun. There's your proportionality constant, and this goes here. So there it is, just with a quick little flick of the wrist. You can, in modern days, quickly derive that Kepler's third law is true. For an ellipse, it turns out, and we again, we're not driving elliptical orbits, but it turns out you can just replace r with a. t squared is 4 pi squared uh, g mass of the sine a cubed, where a is the semi-major radius of, or the semi-major axis of the ellipse. So you'll notice, interesting, this doesn't depend on anything about the planet. You probably notice this one because it's, it's general property of the entire solar system. It only depends on the mass, the, the proportionality constant only depends on the mass of the sun and universal constants of the universe. Everything else, um, well, it depends a little bit on the planet in the sense of its eccentricity, but if they're all roughly circular, you're going to notice that they all have about the same constant. 